MD Prepper here, giving an initial review of the Mossberg 500 just in case sandstorm kit. Mossberg has had these just in case JIC kits out for a few years now. They have three versions other than the second generation, which is a takedown version, but the first gen had a marine coat version that came with a pump action Mossberg 500 pistol grip with a marine coat finish on it for saltwater corrosion resistance. All of the just in case kits come with these big tubes. They're um, six inch diameter by three feet long, reinforced fiberglass, uh, various colors. The marine kit came in blaze orange. They had a green one. Uh, the standard green kit just came with a standard blue version of a basic Mossberg 500 pump action and obviously the sandstorm version. Um, the marine coat version came with some tools. I believe it's a multi-tool and a folding knife. The green version was for more woodland use theoretically. That one came with a little sardine survival can. Um, this one doesn't come with anything so it leaves a lot more space to be used. So the sandstorm just comes with these two. Now I would not have purchased this Justin case kit just because I thought it was overpriced. When I saw it I thought you were overpaying for the roughly $350 to $400 you pay for it. But one of my favorite gun dealers had left one of these in the back of the store. This was their show model. They left it in the back and forgotten about it. Realized they had it before they came to the local gun show today. And they decided just to get rid of it. It's the last one we've got. This has got a few dings on it. Um, nothing major just from being handled and looked at and at shows and stuff like that. I'll show you those scuff marks later. But they marked the whole thing down to $250. So for $250, the shotgun alone is worth that, especially with the dirt coated finish on it. So now let me go ahead and say I'm going to make additional videos. I'm going to make a video reviewing just the shotgun, its pluses and minuses, and just the tube and its uses. But let me go ahead and comment on the just in case philosophy. Just in case, that always bothered me a little bit. Just in case, uh, I keep a fire extinguisher just in case, but I keep it readily accessible. Uh, I keep some fix a flat and air compressor in case I get a flat tire, but I keep that accessible. Just in case is for an emergency. And emergencies tend to happen quickly. I need to get at them quickly. Well, you can't get this shotgun quickly in this tube. Uh, that's a big slowdown. First thing I noticed when they were putting the shotgun in the tube is like, man, I hope I don't have to get this thing in a hurry. Um, tube is big, it's heavy. It's nice and sturdy, but you got this giant wing nut. Now, don't worry if you can't see this too well. I'll do another video. You got to unscrew that wing nut all the way, or just about to pull the top off. Then you got to reach down, pull the shotgun out. Shotgun's in a plastic bag, which I think is silly. This being waterproof and everything else. Um, and then there's your gun. Well, that's kind of a pain. It's going to take a while. Excuse me, bad guy or bear. Um, give me a second, or several seconds, half a minute. Um, so, just in case, no. This is long term. Just in case. This is. Long term, everything goes wrong, and I need a weapon, or I need something stored long term. This is a long store, long term storage setup, not something you need to readily access. Um, read online, folks said, "Oh, well, you can take this tube and put your shotgun in there, and your ammo, and all your other camping and survival gear, defense gear, and just take this camping or hiking with your family. Throw it in the car and then hike with it." Terrible idea. I bought this just about as soon as I got to the show today and had to carry it around for another two, two and a half hours over my shoulder. This is not comfortable. This is not meant to be carried any distance, okay? This is meant to, for two purposes, um, keeping it stored up in the ground somewhere or in the rafters or under the floorboard of a house or something like that long term where you don't have to worry about moisture or rats or anything else getting to it um, or on the water. Now, for the water, I think this is a great idea potentially, but most of us spend the vast majority of our time on land. Now, if I was a kayaker, like a long distance kayaker or a sailor, had a sailboat, like to sail or, you know, whatnot, if I was canoeing down a river in bear country, something like that, and I needed something to keep a firearm relatively safe that I didn't need while I was canoeing, but needed in the evenings, this would be great. This would be fantastic. Put this in your canoe. This thing tips over, falls out. It's going to float. Uh, at least it'll float with the shotgun in the tube. I don't know how much gear you can put in here, so that's another issue I've got with this that I'll discuss later. But um, I tip my canoe over. Well, at least I can grab my shotgun. It's not at the bottom of the river. Um, now, you should probably attach this thing to your canoe or kayak or whatnot so it doesn't go anywhere. But um, that being said, that would be a good way to protect things. You know, you're kayaking or you're canoeing and you pull up to the riverside at night to sleep. You immediately pull this thing out in case Mr. Bear or something comes around, coyotes or whatnot. You're good to go. So decent self-defense for that. Um, let me get this giant tube out of the way. We'll discuss that later in another video. So overall, though, like I say, four hundred dollars for the whole kit, I thought was a little overpriced. These days, they seem to be running about three fifty, but for two fifty, I couldn't pass it up just for the shotgun. Um, the shotgun's eighteen and a half inch barrel. It's five plus one, firing two and three quarters, and it's also will take three inch um, magnums. So no chokes or anything available for it. Just a bead side up front. 
Um, left the price tag on there just for cool factor for the moment. Two forty nine plus tax. I think it was two sixty out the door. Um, obviously in desert camo here. Sort of a Duracoat finish. I believe it's Mossberg's proprietary version though. Um, not really fond of the desert setup because I don't live in the desert. I live here in South Carolina, so this camo pattern doesn't do me a bit of good. But it is corrosion resistant, and that's why I got it. Uh, that and I like Mossberg's. Good setup. You know, it's not going to wear and tear too badly if I neglect it. Uh, keep this in the truck. Keep this wherever exposed to the elements. Going to be good to go. Longer than your standard shotgun setup. So for 250 for this shotgun with this finish on it, I thought that was worth it. Now, there's a few little dings on this thing. Um, I'll show that in the other video, just specific to this. Up here around the, the muzzle, a little bit around there, some up on the top, nothing too terrible. Um, if I carry this shotgun decently and use it a fair amount for six months, it had the same amount of dings, so I'm not worried about it for the price. Now, I've already got a shotgun like this, um, not the Justin Case 500, but uh, one of the Cruiser models, and actually I believe it's a Persuader model. Um, the only advantage of this shotgun is that it's compact. That's it. That's the only positive you're getting from this thing compared to any other shotgun out there is it's small and it's short, okay? Other than that, it's got a lot of flaws to it. Recoil is awful with this thing. Uh, you just don't have that shoulder stock, that shoulder recoil. That just takes up so much more than you think it does. Even shooting like birdshot or reduced recoil buckshot, this thing hurts. After five or six rounds, you're done. This will never be a fun range toy. Never, ever, 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 ever. Uh, I knew that when I got this, but that's not what this is for. Now, everybody loves shotguns for versatility. Well, I'll tell you right now, this one's less versatile than most shotguns. Um, I've read on sites and all, well, if you have the shotgun in this just in case kit, you're out in the woods, you can do anything you need to with the shotgun. Uh, no. I would say this is primarily designed for up close personal defense, and that is it. Okay. Could you substitute and do a frankly half ass job of other tasks? Yes, you could. But this is for up close and personal, primarily due to the recoil and the terrible aiming. Without that buttstock, you're going to be wavering a bit. You're just holding it like so. You know, it's not as easy as you think. Um, I was shooting at some targets, roughly rabbit sized less than 20 feet away, and I had trouble hitting them, especially on the first go-round, even with birdshot, because you're just not as accurate with this. You're just not, okay? And I've, again, had another one of these for years. This is up close and personal. You're within 10 yards of me, and i got to blast you, um, keep you away from me. Could I shoot a bird on the wing or a pheasant or something? God, I'd hate to have to try, but if I had to, sure, I could give it a shot, literally. Um, but you're not going to be taking... You could be taking squirrels out of trees with this and stuff like that, but it's not ideal for a survival weapon. Uh, I would say a survival weapon would be a 22 or a 20 gauge or 410, preferably a Rossi match pair, something like that. This is up close and personal, boys. This is not, let's go hunt and deer. God help you firing a slug in this. I couldn't imagine how much that would hurt firing a slug. Um, and again, 18 and a half inch barrel. You got no chokes, no nothing like that. It's not what this gun is made for. Now, still a nice gun. I still like it, but only up close and personal. Um, I fired a lot of rounds through it today once I got home with it. Fired flawlessly just like every other Mossberg out there. Great. Fit everything I put through it. Um, standard bird shot did fine. Recoil was fairly sharp. Full on, full load buckshot was awful. Absolutely awful. I didn't make it through five rounds between, you know, having to go, God, is this worth it? Uh, I have some reduced recoil buckshot, that Rio reduced recoil buckshot, which I really like a lot. That is what I would shoot in this. That works a lot better. Um, it doesn't kill you on the recoil, so you can actually reload and be back on target faster. Is it as powerful as a single shot, a full load buckshot? No, but for a gun like this, reduce recoil is what you're going to need. Especially if you've got somebody else shooting this female, something like that. Um, it's drilled and tapped up here for optics if you want that, but for a weapon like this, optics are silly. Maybe a reflex sight or something, maybe, but um, other than that, nothing else. does have the sling swivels already on it, there and there. Um, if I was going to use this out in the woods or what not, I probably would attach a sling to it. Um, no ammo capacity on this thing other than what's in it. There's no side swivel. You don't have a buttstock to put one of those neoprene holders on it. That's a hit against it, but I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in j just gun video. So, overall, for $250 or so, I think this is a steal. I was very glad to pick it up, but... Um, Overall, the $400 price, I think you're overpaying. I will cover this a little more in the uh, future videos. Again, the next one will probably be just about this shotgun and the pluses, minuses, and potential upgrades and weaknesses that I haven't talked about in detail. And the second one will also be on the kit, but it'll be just on the tube and its overall uses. So, can you prep her out?